In our last video clip, we created the lumber that we need for our floor platform. In this clip, we're going to go ahead and assemble our floor platform. We'll be doing it in a few different stages, so let's take a look at what it's going to look like when it's finished. We're going to be laying a floor a sill plate, and this sill plate is going to sit right on top of the concrete blocks that we have done already in previous units. Then we're going to add a header joist. That's this part here that's standing up. And then we're going to add the actual floor joists to those. We're going to be supporting the structure on the columns that we created in an earlier lesson. So that's right here. Now we're not, it needs to be clearly stated that we're not going to be doing this exactly the way you would in real world construction. There are several things that we are going to eliminate just to simplify our model. In real world construction, there would be some metal fasteners here to hold the things together. We're just creating a model to show what the process is like. So let's take a look at our Google Classroom. Here we can see there's the sill plate, here's the header joist, and here are the regular floor joists. Now the floor joists need to be spaced a certain spacing apart, and we'll talk about that when we get to them. Up here in our diagram, you can see some of the fasteners that would ordinarily be used in real-world construction. So again, Let's start by laying a sill plate all the way around. And we said in our earlier lesson that our sill plate is the one that's 2 by 6. So let's go to our lumber drawing. Let's select our 2 by 6 and we'll copy it. Then we'll go to our foundation drawing and we will paste it. And we want to paste it so that it's sitting on top of our blocks. So let's look at just a little bit here and make sure that it's actually sitting exactly where we want it to be. We can move it so that it lines up exactly with the corner block here. So we want to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. And notice that we're sitting it flat down on top of the blocks. Okay, now what we would do is add another board to the next section. So again, we can use Control Move or we could say Paste again. I'm going to use um, Control Move for this one. And I want to move a copy. Oops. Okay, I want to move a copy straight on down. Now I know that this is 12 feet long so I can start to move it in the direction I want and I can type 12 apostrophe and I will get a piece that has exactly placed itself 12 feet away from my original okay, orbit to make sure that it's correctly positioned. Sitting right on top of that cinder block as I wish. And again, I can control move again. And I want it to go 12 feet, so I'll start to move it and then type 12 apostrophe enter. And I can go again. Oops. I want it to go straight forward. If you're not in the correct position when you start to move, it doesn't always move along the path that you want it to move. So if that doesn't happen, we'll start again. So apostrophe. Now this one will bring us over the edge. And if I just cut this board or use my push pull to simulate a cut, it will make all of the boards shorter. So what I have to do is make this one unique. I'm going to click on the component. 
I'm going to go up here where it says Edit, Solid Component, and you'll see there are four of them because we placed four boards. I'm going to say Make This One Unique. Then I'm going to orbit around the edge. I'm going to double click to open the component. And use my push pull to push that in. Just simulate as if I cut it exactly the size. And I want to make sure that that exactly lines up with the edge of my concrete box. What I'm going to do now is pause the video so that I can continue to put a sill plate all the way around and then we'll go on to the next part of our process. Okay, we left off with one row of sill plate. I'm going to do a side row. Rather than just do a control move, I could do that. I'm going to go to edit paste again. So Select, edit, paste. I'm going to paste my board over here as if it were sitting on the top. I'll go to top view, use my rotate tool, make sure that I'm on the blue rotate tool, click once in the center of the board, click once in space, begin to turn the board, type in 90, enter, so it's a perfect 90 degrees. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to take my move tool and I'm going to move this and I want to position it so that the end exactly matches up with the end of my other board. Right, I'm going to again pause the video so that I can add a couple more boards along this end and then we'll pick up again. Once again, my piece of lumber is hanging over the edge of my foundation, so I need to cut it. Again, before I can cut this, I want to make that unique. So I'll say Edit, Solid Component, Make Unique. I will orbit around so that I can get to the end here. Zoom in. Double click my component to open it. And use my push pull as if it were a saw, to saw off my piece here. And I will click in space, orbit, it, make sure that I've got it lined up perfectly with the edge, and I do. Alright, now because we are working in virtual space and not construction workers, we can take a shortcut here. I can select those boards that I've just put in place, and I can copy them and put them on the other two sides. So let's do that. Let's grab one. Hold my shift key down. The next one. The next one. Oops. I don't want to grab that. I want the boards that are on top. Once I've selected what I need, I can control move or copy over. And then go to my top view. Take that copy that I've made. Use my rotate tool. Click on the copy. Click into space. Start to turn it. And I want to turn this around 180 degrees. 180. Enter. Now just take my move tool and move this so that it is in correct position sitting on top of my structure. Now I may have to orbit and zoom in a little bit to make sure that I place this correctly because I do want it to line up perfectly. So I'll take my new tool and again check my corners make sure that they are perfectly lined up. So I need to move this over more. Make my corner so I can turn this up there. It's perfect as you can get. There you go. So now we have the silk plate in place. And we're ready for the next part of our project. Let's go back to the instructions. And we see that we need to put in 
a header joist. A header joist here is one of the 2 by 10 joists. So let's go back to our lumber document and select our 2 by 10, edit copy, and let's go back to here. Now I'm going to go to top view. I'm going to say, give me space, I don't have anything, edit paste. Now our header joists need to be vertical. So let's zoom in close. Let's go a bit. And then we move it over. And orbit somewhere. Take our rotate tool. Click on the If you're having trouble grabbing the right part to orbit to, you may need to zoom in. So I'm going to take my rotate tool, click in the middle, click out in space, begin to turn, type in 90, enter. Now I need to lift this up with my move tool, and I need to position it so that it's sitting on top of my sill plate. I'm going to work it a little bit because I'm still out in space here. Notice how I change views back and forth as I need to so that I can position things correctly. What seems to be sitting on top of something in one view is far from that position in another view. Get close to where we want to be. Okay, I'm going to follow a very similar procedure as we did with the sill plate, and I'm going to put copies of this header joist all the way around the perimeter of the building. I'll pause the video while I do that. Okay, I've created my sill plate and my header joist. Now I want to create my center beam, and then that will finish this clip. We need to go to top view again. I need to find the center point of the side of my building. So for that, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'll type my tape measure. And I'll measure from the very corner to here. And I see that it's 30 feet. So I'm going to get down 15 feet to make a mark. And I need to grab that corner very precisely for this to work. So I'll zoom in, take my tape measure, click on the edge of my board here, the outer edge. I'll start to go down and type 15 feet. 15 feet. And that would put a mark over here in the center. If you don't see the mark, you can just drag down until you get 15 feet. The closer you are, the better you are to see that mark. So that's going to be my guide for where I'm going to put my center beam. My center beam is basically the same as my header joists, only I'm going to go across the building. So I'm going to go ahead and say edit paste again, because I still have that document. I'm going to kind of set it on top of my boards over here. 
so it's a little bit of pushing through. Alright, that's good enough for now. I'll orb it. I'm going to take my rotate tool and place it on the end of this. Click, click, and begin to turn and type in 90 degrees. And enter. And then I want to move this so that it lines up with my center and also sits on top of my silk plate and on top of my columns that I've created. And you really need to zoom in close to get this position as well so that it sits on top of the silk plate and also on top of the center of the columns. Now, once I have this lined up properly, I'm going to put two more of them alongside of this. So again, I'm going to pause the video. Alright, I have my center beam lined up with the center of the side wall, sitting on the sill plate, and also in the center of my support column. I'm going to use Control Move to move a copy of it right alongside of itself. And and I need another copy because this needs to be a triple beam. There we go. I need to have this triple beam go all the way across my house. So again, I can select all three of them and use Control Move and have that cross the house. Again, I'll pause the video. I've selected all three. I'll use the Control Move. And I'll do the same thing that we did before. I'll start to move them in the direction I want and then type in 12 feet. Over. Control move, start to move them in the direction I want. Take 12 feet. Alright, and I've gotten to the point where they extend beyond where I need them to. So I need to make each one of these unique and trim them down. Select one, edit, make unique. Double click it to open it. Just push pull as if I were cutting the board. I take it so that it just sits inside of my header joist but actually does still touch the header. And I will repeat that for the other two. Select the next one. Edit. Make unique. Double click open. Orbit. Out in space, select the last one, edit, make unique, double click to open, and trim it. Right, I'm going to stop the video at this point. We will add the actual floor joists in the next video clip.